Hello everybody and welcome to this video. My name is Lucas and I am a senior engineer at Upstart. Today I wanted to show you how easy Okta makes it to enable developer self-service OAuth application security utilizing their authorization servers as well as their Terraform provider. A couple weeks ago, I posted an article that outlines the benefits of OAuth and why your company should consider using it. To implement OAuth with Okta, you need a couple things. You need an OAuth application, you need scopes for that application, access policies, and access policy rules, to name a few. Typically, you'd request these from the IT team. It would take a couple days for them to receive and triage the request. Then they would have to get approval to do all those things via change management control. This process could take a couple days, if not a couple weeks. With the Terraform module that's mentioned in that article on Medium, this can be done in the amount of time it takes for a person to review a pull request in an Okta Terraform repository, as this module creates a client-side application, a server-side application, the app policy, the app policy rule, and the scopes for the application. Also to note, if you want to change things or you need to add scopes to your application, you don't have to submit another IT request if you have this Terraform module. All you have to do is go and add the scope to the module declaration in your Okta Terraform repository, making iterations so much quicker and everyone's a lot more happy. So with that being said, let's jump into the code and see how it works. All right, so what we see here is a simple Flask app with a couple different routes. There's the root route and then a mixed cookie route. So let's get this app running let's see okay it's running let's go ahead and click that this app is dope okay so we are running successfully now we see that this route slash mix cookie accepts a post request and it will mix our cookie dough so let's go ahead and do that so we'll do curl dash x post and then grab the url which is this and then add the route to it. Great, message cookie dough mix status code 204, which is what we'd expect here. All is fine and well, and now we have mixed cookie dough. So this is great. However, what if we don't want anyone to be able to mix the cookie dough? A funny example, let's say you're running this easy bake oven server on your internal network for some reason, and someone hacks your Roomba, which is also on the internal network, then somebody that hacks into your Roomba might be able to talk to your Easy Bake Oven server and mix the cookie dough. You don't want that to happen. So what we want is to add a verification or protection to this route. And how we can accomplish this is via OAuth. And what that'll look like, so let's start writing some code here. We'll say, okay, proceed is gonna be a variable and let's say it's going to call a verify method with the request made to the server and maybe the scope that we need to be able to do this great so we have this function and the variable and then this variable will probably be a boolean like if proceed is allowed or if proceed is true then go ahead and return this message saying that the cookie dough is mixed else um, return Oops. Message um, error and status code 500 or something like that. Not 5,000. That would be real bad. Okay. Great. So we have this workflow now that we're going to call some function verify with the request details and the scope that's needed to perform this request. So let's go ahead and make this verify function. Verify. And it's going to take request context as well as the scope needed to verify this call. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the request headers, which would contain our authorization token from the OAuth server. And we want to get that token and do an introspection on it. So Okta Auth offers the introspection endpoint in their OAuth API. And that will provide us details on things like whether or not the token is active, the scopes provided for the token, and um, things that'll help us verify that the request is true. So I just wrote a couple lines of code. If the request headers, um, if the authorization header does not exist, we will return false. And that will mean that the 
status code is equal to 500, the cookie dough did not get mixed. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and restart our Flask server. And then let's go ahead and run this post request again. We'll get a 500 because this post request did not contain the authorization header. Great. So that works. Perfect. Um, now, else, because we want to be able to make a request here successfully with some criteria. And this is basically saying now we know authorization exists because it's not none. We will do an introspect call, which I will define soon. And the token is going to be equal to request headers. Oops. Get authorization. And then it's going to be a bearer token. So we're going to replace that in the string because when we request the authorization header, it's going to say bearer space the token value. So let me also put a T here. So that makes sense. We're going to introspect this token. And then if there is no response, um, we are going to return false, let's say. So if we introspect the token and there's a error introspecting it, we will return false. Um, and then if not, we are going to say JSON is equal to r.json. So we're going to get the JSON response to the introspection and we will return our json.get active is equal to true and scope in r underscore json dot get scope. So a couple things um, that I want to explain here. When we introspect the token with Octa's introspection endpoint, there is an active attribute in the response and there is also a scope attribute in the response. If we look at the documentation, we see that active, it indicates whether the token is active or not. And then there's a space delimited list of scopes in the response. So what we want is we want the scope that we're going to pass into this verify function, do.cookie.mix, to exist in the list of scopes, and we want the token to be true. So that'll give us the confidence that this token is legit and it can mix the cookie dough. So we have to now define this introspect function. So this will handle the token introspection to Okta and we will, it will take a token as the argument and then we will do a try. R is equal to requests.post. We're using the Python request library for this. And then there's a config file that has all the variables we need here. And we're going to use the default auth server with this module. And we will hit the introspection endpoint. And then our headers are going to be content type, and then we'll do application x www form url encoded. So this, all this stuff can be found in the API documentation. Um, and then the data that we're going to supply, uh, we're going to supply the client ID of the application that's performing the introspection. This is typically going to be hosted on your server versus client. And then we will get the client secret of that as well. All this is defined in the config file. So I don't expose my secrets to the world. And then the token is gonna be the token that's passed in from the function argument. Um, then we'll do r dot raise for status, just to blow anything up if something doesn't work. And then if it works, we'll return r, and then we wrap this in a try block. So we're going to accept requests dot exceptions dot request exception as e and then we will just print e return false so now that we look at this introspection function oops um we'll see that we will return a response an http response if there is no error introspecting the token otherwise we will return false so that's what introspect is going to do. And if we combine that with the verify function, um, we will return false if not R. Otherwise, we will return the value of the token being active and the scope being in the token. 
So great. Now we have this. Hopefully now if we request a token with the correct scope, we will be able to make a successful request. However, these scopes that you configure, we need to configure on the Octa side. So this is where the Terraform module piece comes in. So let's hop over to that window. All right, now that we have our application set up to perform an OAuth request and introspect, let's go ahead and set up our Octa resources using that Terraform module. So we're going to head to the module documentation um, and we're gonna look at an example usage of this module to see how we can use it. So pretty simple. Um, we'll just copy this and then we'll fill out the rest step by step and we'll kind of explain how exactly it's being used. So we will go ahead and declare the module with the source. Great. So we have our source just a GitHub link to the repository with the 2.0.1 release and we'll just flip back and forth. We are going to use the um, documentation provided in the uh, readme. So let's go ahead and take a look. So in this module, there are a couple inputs, access token lifetime minutes. So this is gonna be how long you want your tokens to be able to perform actions before you need to provide another. Uh, it's not required and the default is five. So we will leave that there. Five minutes is okay. Um, client credentials, we'll skip that and come back to that because we're gonna handle that in a little bit. So label, this is the name of your service. So the name of the application is definitely required um, and there is no default value. So let's go ahead and add one. Um, pop back over to the window, type label is equal to, let's say easy bake oven. Great. Okay, so we have our label. Um, oh yeah, it's type string, so we know that. Next variable, we have OAuth config. Uh, this has the OAuth config for your application. Um, and the default value is application, web, grant types, client credentials, authorization code, response types, or code. Uh, we're gonna stick with this. Um, this is for the client credentials flow for server to server authentication. And um, I'm not gonna mess with the different types of grants, responses, um, that are available the uh can the spec for oauth gets pretty confusing in that aspect so we're going to keep it simple client credential flow server to server so we aren't going to include this um we'll just accept that that's the default value and move along uh policy description um this sets the description for your apps access policy so let's go ahead and say that um pop back over to the window so we'll do policy description and i believe that was a string if it makes sense yep so the policy description, this policy allows only my easy bake oven to, or maybe not, allows my computer to access my easy bake oven. I don't know, something like that. Great, policy description set, redirect URI is kind of the same thing as auth config. There are a couple dependencies combined between some of these values and the redirect URI, whether or not it's necessary. Um, we're just gonna make it simple and keep the default value as google.com um, as this doesn't have any uh, client facing redirects or anything, but uh, due to some nuances in Okta's uh, OAuth implementation, we have to include this. So we'll just keep it as simple as google.com and then scopes. So we see a scope is a list of objects that have a name and a description. So this is the default value, just some dummy uh, scopes. So like service.object.read, service.object.admin. Um, we are going to provide our own list of scopes as a typical developer would. So let's go ahead and pop over here and we will do scopes is equal to, and it was a list of objects such that the um, objects contain name and description keys. So if we remember, um, see if I could pop back over to our application. Uh, we are expecting to be able to mix cookies. We need the scope do.cookie.mix. So we're gonna declare that scope in our application. So let's go ahead and do name. And this is gonna be do.cookie.mix. And then it needs a description. So we will put that, oops. Uh, and this will be grants the ability or caller to mix cookie dough. Great, okay, so we have that scope, lovely. 
Now, one last thing that we have to do. Uh, if you remember uh, a couple minutes ago, I said we are going to handle client credentials a little different. There is a great article that I've found on dealing with secrets uh, in Terraform because currently t uh, secrets are stored in the Terraform state file. This is an aside. And that state file is in plain text, more or less. So if you decide to use this, there's a disclaimer, you should definitely encrypt your data at rest for your Terraform state file. Um, typically uh, an S3 backend, we should have encryption on that bucket. Um, so to, to be as secure as possible. Otherwise there isn't a way yet in Terraform to not store secrets in the state file. Um, however, that doesn't mean that we should declare them in plain text in our uh, Terraform configurations. That's an even worse thing to do. So how I handle it and how I've seen other people handle it is they use a secrets vault like AWS Secrets Manager to store the secrets and then pull them in with variables uh, and data sources in Terraform to load them into uh, whatever they need. Because this way we won't be sharing any values. It's just going to be a variable. So. Um, how we do that, or how I do it at least, and this is uh, just a little bit of knowledge of the AWS uh, Terraform provider. Let me pop back over to my code window. Here we go. We are going to declare a data source. So AWS secrets manager secret version, and then we'll just call it creds. And the secret ID is going to be local.secret. So we're gonna look up a secret based on a local value and we just call it secret. So now we have to declare our locals um, and secret ID is gonna just be called test secret. So you'd have this configured on your end in secrets manager already. Um, and then creds is equal to JSON decode data dot AWS secrets manager secret version dot creds dot secret string. So if you look into the provider documentation for Secrets Manager, this is a viable way to pull in your secrets as a JSON object, or I guess a map or just plain object in Terraform's language. Um, so we're gonna decode the JSON into an object and store that as a local variable called creds. Oh, hold on, there's a bug. We will get rid of that. So great, now we pulled in the secret and then we decoded it into a variable called creds. So now let's go ahead and get rid of that terminal um, and declare our client credentials here. It's equal to, and then pop over to the documentation to see what they expect. They expect an object with client, I, with these values, client, client ID, client, client secret, server client ID, and then server client secret. Um, the client will be making the request for the token and the server will be doing the introspection. That's why there's two different ones. Um, so now uh, we will just do, and this is kind of uh, bulky, so just hang with me. Um, client, client ID is equal to, and then we'll just, um, oh shoot. Okay, client, client secret, and then we'll just change this to server, and we'll do the same down here. Server client ID and then server secret. Okay, now we need to do, figure out what these are. So if you remember, we stored the, our secret JSON decoded as the creds, so we will do local.creds, and then we're going to index this way and I'm going to try to make this as quick as possible because <laughs> this is a lot of typing. Uh, client dot client secret, and then we want to do the same thing here, but server client ID and then server client secret. Okay, cool. So we have our client credentials that we provided to the module. So now this module is declared. This should provide us with scopes our applications and access policy rules, access policies, and the client IDs. So lovely. Now we do some Terraform stuff. Typically in a production environment, this would be behind some type of CI CD deploy pipeline, but this is all local stuff for example. So I'm just going to run some commands, Terraform init. All right, so we run Terraform init 
Great, Terraform repository has been initialized, so we should be good to go. Let's run a Terraform apply and we'll see what the output is. I would expect like five things to be created here. Um, so let's take a look at what the module is gonna create for us and make this a little bigger for everybody. It's going to create our client side app, great. Um, Easy Bake Oven client. It's going to create our server side application for the introspection. And then it's going to create the app policy for the authorization server. That's going to create the app policy rule for the authorization server. And then it'll create the scope that we needed it to create. And awesome. All that looks lovely. Uh, we will enter a yes for Terraform to apply. Okay, perfect. So those resources are created um, and we can head over to Okta to see them created. All right, so here we are in Okta. Uh, we can see that our Easy Bake Oven and our, our client and our server applications are deployed. And then the other pieces that we need are the API pieces. So we'll go to the auth server, we will edit it and we see the scope dough.cookie.mix is there, great. We go to access policies. We have the Easy Bake Oven policy and this is for the client. And let's check out the Easy Bake Oven policy rule. It'll say, okay, um, if this, and it, it targets the Easy Bake Oven client. So if the client requests dough.cookie.mix, we will grant the token for five minutes. Awesome, perfect, that's what we want. So now that we have our Okta configured with that Terraform module, we should be good to go back to our application and start making some requests to verify that it works. So you don't see it, but I have a config file with all those credentials, which I would imagine you would, since you're providing your own credentials to these applications. So <clears throat> with that being said, if you remember the last request I made to the server was a post request to mix cookies and we get a 500 error code. So great. We know that if we have no authorization header that we are going to get denied. Um, now what we want to do, uh, I have a test request file um, just for ease of use. I'm just going to have it pre-typed out and we are going to make a request to the server. Um, all this should work. You could see we're doing dough.cookie.mix. We're asking for that scope. Um, we have the client config client ID which if you remember from our access policy rule, if it requests this scope, we are good to go through the client credentials flow. It's going to get that token and then it's going to make a request to the server with mix.cookie um, with the token as the authorization header. It's a bare token. And then we're going to print the response just to see that it works. So if we run poetry, run Python three test request, we should see a 200. Great. Okay. Cookie dough mixed. Lovely love a mixed cookie dough um, with a 204 status code. So now you're saying, okay, but that could just be because it only has authorization header. How, how do I know that this bear token actually works? Um, so what we can do is just take this out and then we can go ahead and make that same request and we will get a 500. Great message error status code 500. So great. We see that the token generation works and that we can send a valid token. Um, but let's say we send an invalid token. Um, let's change this to ASDF1234 QWERTY. Let's see what happens then. Awesome, invalid token, we get a status code of 500 error. Obviously, if you have a more built out application, you can kind of custom, tailor your error messages or something to say invalid token. But yeah, so all of the Okta resources are set up, ready to go for your application's authorization. And it was just as simple as making a Terraform apply um, in your Okta Terraform repository. Now that we know this works, let's go over what we saw today. So a couple things we saw today that hopefully piqued your interest or would make you want to dive in more are that one, um, all of this was done by one person. Uh, you, We didn't even have to log into Okta to verify that that configuration was there. If we have the um, Terraform repository set up correctly, we are good to go with just a pull request and merge it into main. And since you provided your own credentials, you probably had all of your own um, access policy set up on those secrets. So 
literally all you had to do that was left from developing your application was just getting all the Okta resources set up. How, how much easier could that be? We didn't have to wait for communications between teams, um, the possibility of someone entering something in error. Um, and also, we have that repository set up. If you needed to add another scope, it was as simple as adding the name and the description of the scope. So if you wanted to add like maybe cookie.bake um, as a scope and a cookie dot, and a cookie underscore bake route to your application, um, it's as simple as developing the application on your side and then making a four line code pull request adding that scope. Thanks for tuning in everybody. I hope you enjoyed the content. Let me know if you have any questions or want to talk about this some more. Thanks.